Shalom, holy initiates and holy adepts. Welcome to my holy channel. I am the chief magician of Mystery Babylon. Chach Sameach to all of my fellow brothers and sisters as we are in the midst of the holy feast of Sukkoth. And um, I once again want to do a very, very powerful revelatory video where I'm going to reveal some very, very uh, esoteric information that is only known uh, amongst the actual holy grandmasters of Israel and the what we would call the holy order of the Zohar. The holy order of the Zohar is really what is Hebrew for the holy Illuminati, that is those Israelites that are illuminated, fully illuminated um, by the light. And in this video, we're going to talk about the holy illuminist foundations of the Breslov movement, which is one of the biggest and largest Jewish uh, sects in this last generation. I'm gonna take you behind uh, sealed gates in this video. And as I said earlier, I'm going to reveal to you very esoteric uh, information that's only known uh, to the Grand Masters of Israel and uh, really the whole Illuminati. Now, I should say that there are some scholars, there are some very erudite, very elite scholars, Israeli Jewish scholars, that they are aware uh, of what I'm going to review here because there have been a few books that have been written um, concerning the nature of the revelation um, in this video. Um, so, you know, there are erudite scholars, of course, but even though they may be privy to much of this very esoteric information, um, they still don't fully under they still do not fully understand the full quintessence of the revelation, let alone the full implications and ramifications, to say the least. So we're going to talk about an actual grandmaster today. This this man was a grandmaster of the whole Illuminati, whether most people know it or don't. And he is none other than Rab Nachman, who was the great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov. This is a very, very, very powerful Holy Zadik. Very, very, very powerful Holy Zadik. This guy was a grandmaster of grandmasters. I would even go as far to say a very powerful holy magician, given that he was the great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov. He's founder of a very, very powerful movement, the Breslov movement. For those of you that know, the Hebrew word for Breslov is a permutation of the Hebrew two words, Leib Bashar, which is a heart of flesh. Now, those of you that know your divine oracles very well will understand the quintessence of this phrase. So, the Rach Nachman, this is, I'm going to give you, I'm just going to, Right from the onset, I'm just going to give you the full-blown revelation, and we'll expand upon it as we continue. It is that Rab Nachman was what we would say, what we would term a chief disciple of Hamashiach Yaakov Frank. Um, now, this is a fact. It's a very closely guarded secret. Um, in fact, I don't even think many of the leaders and members of the Breslov movement, of the Hasidim, I don't think they even know this or are aware of this very sadly because, you know, most of these average religious Jews, they're very ignorant, they're very spiritual. And I know this because I know I'm a Jew myself. I'm a Jew myself. I know many of these Jews. I know tons of Jews. Your average Jew is very spiritually ignorant and very, I mean, very spiritually blind and very spiritually ignorant, okay? I know this because, because, I, a Jew myself, was spiritually blind and ignorant for a season in my life. I too was in a season very early in my life where I was spiritually blind and ignorant, just like many of my Jewish brethren. I was there. I know I know what it's like. I know what it's about. So it's very, very sad because 
the entire community of the Breslov movement and the Hasidim, they have no idea of what I'm, what I'm, what I've just revealed here and what I'm going to reveal here and all the proofs that I'm going to give. Okay, so the Rach Nagman penned a very powerful holy work. It's one of the greatest and holiest of texts that has ever been written, and that is the Likute Moharan. The Likute Moharan is a principal text, is the principal text of the Breslov movement, of the Hasidim, and really of the and really to a large extent of Chabad. So many of the Ashkenazi Jews, for much of the Ashkenazi Jewish world, the Likute Moharan is considered their principal text. And um, the facts are that it is one of the greatest and most powerful and holiest of divine texts, um, which is a very mystical uh, spiritual commentary, very esoteric, very mystical commentary on the Zohar, Antikuniha Zohar, uh, etc. This is a very, very advanced spiritual text. There's a great secret here. I've already revealed a great secret that Rab Nachman was a chief disciple of Chumashat Yaakov Frank. He was very wise. He had a very, he had a ridiculously high SQ and IQ. His method of operation was to conceal the teachings of Chumashat Yaakov Frank in a very astute, wise manner. So, he looked at the aftermath of the Frankist and Marian movements, and he didn't like what he saw. So he said to himself, Indeed, Yaakov Frank is Hamashiach. He understood the divine mission of Hamashiach Yaakov Frank, of really of Hamashiach Israel. And he said, I need to redeem the divine sparks i need to unify israel but more importantly i need to take israel the remnant of israel i need to take them to these higher very lofty sublime levels but he had to be very smart about it he couldn't just openly state that yakub frank is Hamshiak. he couldn't openly be part of the of the marian movement he couldn't this all had to be concealed because he's a holy zadik, he's a rab. This is, the, this is the method of operation of many illuminists, even such as myself. Many of them are concealed in high rabbinical positions. And they're highly initiated grandmasters, but they keep all of this very, very concealed. This is the Rab Nachman concealed the fact that he was a grandmaster, that he was a chief disciple of Hamishak Yaakov Frank, that he espoused Shabbatain and Frankist beliefs. He concealed all of this and he came up with a method, a very ingenious method by which to unify Israel and take Israel to the highest spiritual levels through the teachings and wisdom of Hamishak Yaakov Frank and Hamishak Yeshua and in Yeshua and in Yeshua Hamishak Ben Yosef to, 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 to diffuse their teachings, spread their teachings, teach their teachings, but in a very ingenious, concealed way. That's the quintessence of Likute Hamoharan, which is Hebrew for the gleanings of Harab, Rab Nach, of, uh, of Harab Nachman. So that's what he did. So if you're a grandmaster, even if you're a master and you've mastered Likute Moharan, you will be able to read between the lines. There's many numerous profound esoteric levels to this very powerful holy divine text that reveal the secret teachings of Yeshua and Hamashiach Yaakov Frank and Shabbatai Zvi, uh, etc. So, I'm going to reveal some of the proofs now. So I've already stated that, you know, the Rab Nachman was a genius because he basically spread all these secret teachings of Yeshua and Hamashak Yaakov Frank very ingeniously, very subtly in his work, throughout his work, Likute Moharan. Now, as an example, in his introduction, in the introduction to Likute Moharan, which by the way, 
the complete full English translation of this work can be found online. Uh, he says in in, the, in his introduction in a section called Go See, he says that that um, Rashbi said that the Torah would never be forgotten. This was the famous teaching of the Rashbi that the Torah would never be forgotten by Israel. But he recalls the fact that the Rabbanon in Yabne, they all taught and said that the Torah would one day be forgotten, contradicting all of the Rabbanon. This is a very powerful statement that's being made by the Nachman. It's lost on practically every Jew that reads his work because they're too ignorant, they're too spiritually blind. They don't understand the implications and the ramifications that the Rashbi contradicted all of the ancient Rabbanon and sages. Now you reveal some very powerful secrets here. He says that in Sefer Debarim, in chapter 31, verse 21, go into the Hebrew, and in the Hebrew it says, Kilo Tishachach Mipi Zaro, which is Hebrew for, because it will not be forgotten from the mouth of his seed in relation to the Torah. Now, if you take the last letter, of each Hebrew word in that phrase, it spells Yochai. He reveals another very great mystery. In the book of Daniel, in chapter 4, verse 10, the, the Aramaic reads, Ir wakadish min shemaya nachith, just Aramaic for a holy watcher descended from heaven. Now, if you take the first letter of every Aramaic word in that verse, it spells Shimon. What he's telling you <laughs> is that the Rashbi is Hamashiach. Just like the Zohar tells you, the Zohar tells you that the Rashbi is Hamashiach, that he's an incarnation of Hamashiach. Here you have Rab Nachman, a grandmaster, telling you, he's hinting you and telling you, do you know who the Rashbi is? The Rashbi is Hamashiach. He's this holy watcher, this very powerful holy watcher that descended from heaven. He's, in, he's, he's a divine being. Okay. Rab Nachman opens up in his introduction by saying, come and see the works of Elohim, amazing revelations concerning the secret of the great sage Rab Shimon Bar Yochai. So the question is, what are these great secrets? I've revealed to you already some of these secrets. What are these secrets? The Rab Nachman is basically telling you in his introduction, he's saying to you, to those that are initiated, to those that have eyes to see and you're saying, listen, I'm a grandmaster. I'm a grandmaster of the order of, this, of, of Hazohar. And I know all of the holy esoteric mysteries behind the Zohar, behind the Rashbi. Namely that the Zohar is a great Jewish Christian work. Did you get that? Listen to me again. The Zohar is a great Jewish Christian work. I've said this in other videos. I hope you've seen my other videos. I have a whole playlist. I have a whole playlist with videos revealing the highest, most esoteric of arcana behind the Holy Zohar. The Zohar is a Jewish Christian work going back all the way to Yeshua HaMashiach ben Yosef. Yeshua bar Yosef is the grandfather and the chief cornerstone of the entire work of the Zohar. This is the great Arcanum. He knows this. Yaakov Frank taught this and knew this. 
so the Zohar is a great Jewish Christian work of mysticism that is Trinitarian and Marian, as was revealed by the order of the Zohar and Jakob Frank. So Rab Nachman follows, he follows in the occult teachings of Jakob Frank. They're all the hidden secret teachings of Jakob Frank are cryptically and subtly revealed in his principal magnus opus, Likute Moharan. This is why it's one of this is why this is one of the greatest, most powerful of divine texts. If you want to reach very, very high levels of initiation, this is the text to read. That's why many of the Ashkenazi Jews, unfortunately, the true Ashkenazi Jews, most of them in Eastern Europe and some of them in the boroughs of New York, some of them are, 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 are masters and grandmasters and have reached very high levels of initiation by penetrating, literally penetrating this very holy, powerful divine text. This, is, this, this, text does not ex this type of text does not exist in the Jewish Sephardic world, unfortunately. Now, he knows that he knows the secret behind the Zohar. Now, we have all of these very ignorant, we have all these ignorant scholars. There really isn't any really true scholar, as erudite and as elite as some of these Jewish Israeli Kabbalistic scholars are. None of them really know the great secret behind the Zohar, unfortunately. So, we have all of this foolishness, all of this ignorance that Musha de Leon compiled the Zohar. Now there's a great secret here. Why is there this very, why does this very famous teaching exist that Musha de Leon compiled the Zohar? So very, very great secret here. I'm going to reveal it here for the first time. Musha de Leon was a direct descendant of King Dawid, of the Royal Messianic Divine Bloodline, just as myself. How do I know? The question is, how do I, the chief magician of Mr. Babylon, how do I know all these arcana? How do I know all these holy mysteries and secrets? How do I know them? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that all of these holy mysteries, all of these arcana, they were not revealed to me by flesh and blood. Did you get that? They were not revealed to me by flesh and blood. It is because I am a direct descendant of King David, of Mashiach, a divine spark of King Sholomon, my great, great, great grandfather. There's a reason for all of this, a divine reason. Musha de Leon, like myself, was a direct descendant of King David. He descended from Mahir Todros, which is Rab Amurai of the 8th century, who was a direct descendant of King David. All of these holy divine texts originate and were preserved by the royal Davidic bloodline. This is a very great secret. Nobody really knows. I'm revealing all of this for the first time here, okay? Musha de Leon was the grandmaster of the Holy Illuminati. He was the grandmaster and chairman of the Holy Illuminati in Spain during the 1200s. That's the great arcanum that nobody knows. Nobody knows the hidden hand. Nobody knows the hidden invisible hand that moves the world, the true invisible holy hand that moves the world. People don't know who the puppet masters are be working behind the scenes. They have no idea. But it's all hidden right in plain sight. Now, let me reveal to you another, this is, I'm going to reveal to you the divine seal and proof that Rab Nachman was a chief disciple of Hamashiach Yaakov Frank. You'll want to look at the screen now. If you look at the screen, you're going to see a section from Likute Moharan in section 29 in verse 12. He quotes Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20. Which in the Hebrew is Kasaf Nimchar Leshon Zadik. It's Hebrew for choice silver is the tongue of the Zadik. Now the la 
when he wrote this verse, he highlighted this verse in the original Hebrew text to highlight a divine code. Namely that the last the last letter of each of these Hebrew words spells drink. Now he says that the he says in the text that the explanation of this verse and its connection will be clarified elsewhere. This here he's referring to he's here referring the great the great arcane the great arcane whom that that no Jew knows most Jew pretty much every Jew reading this text it goes over there they have no idea they have no clue he's he's alluding to his master to his Lord and to his Savior Hamashiach Yaakov Frank. This is the seal. This is the proof. Hidden right in plain sight. He didn't even hide it. Now, it gets more interesting because Rav Nachman was very famous. He was very famous for speaking in parables and in folk tales. These are very divine folk tales that encrypt and occult lots of hidden esoteric knowledge and wisdom. Now, if you know Hamashiach Yaakov Frank, you know that much of his secret teachings were done in the same manner, through revelation of many parables, but more importantly, many folk tales. Many, many folk tales encrypting some of the highest levels of esoteric knowledge and wisdom. Rab, Rab Nachman followed in the same method of operation as his Lord and Savior, Hamashiach Yaakov Frank. But it gets even more interesting because one of Rav Nachman's famous folk tales or stories is of the Rooster Prince. And this folk tale or story or narrative is found exactly also in the words of Yaakov Frank. This is one of the one of this is one of the most direct teachings straight from the mouth of Hamashiach Yaakov Frank. And Rav Nachman quotes and reveals this entire story in his own Magnus Opus Likutei Moharan. Why? Why would Rav Nachman follow the same method of operation as Hamashiach Yaakov Frank? More importantly, why would Rav Nachman include some of the parables and some of the folk tales from Hamashiach Yaakov Frank in his Magnus Opus? Get a freaking clue. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. This is why I love Likutei Moharan because it contains some of the highest, most esoteric knowledge and wisdom. When I read Hamashiach Yaakov Frank's secret teachings, I was fascinated and mind blown by all of his parables and folk tales. And I wanted more, I wanted more. And Baruch Hashem for Rab Nachman, who extended this and gave me more. There's another even more powerful great mystery here. And all you have to do is look at the family tree, at the genealogy of Rab Nachman. So, we know that Rab Nachman descended from the most famous, infamous Baal Shem Tov, one of the most powerful holies of magicians. And when you go further down the family tree, after Rab Nachman, all the descendants of Rab Nachman, you'll find something very interesting. And by the way, you can go online. The family tree of Rab Nachman is online. You can go and research the accounts of his descendants. It's all online. It's all free online information. The facts are very clear. They're very clear, they're very evident. The facts are that practically all of the descendants of Rav Nachman, his sons, his children, his daughters, their daughters and sons, guess what? They all converted 
to Christianity. Very mysterious, very powerful. Why did the vast majority of the descendants of Rathlan Kaman convert to Christianity? What were the secret teachings of Rathlan Kaman? Do you understand the method of operation of the Grand Masters that they have their chief disciples whom they fully initiate? There's the inner circle and there's the outer circle, as I always like to say. Same thing with Yeshua. There was his inner circle, the 12 disciples, there was his outer circle. He spoke in parables to his outer circle, didn't care much for the outer circle, to the inner circle, which were the 12, the 12 chief disciples, he revealed, he fully initiated them. The same thing with Rabbi Nachman, many grandmasters will have their inner circle, will have their outer circle. What holy mysteries was he revealing to his inner circle? I'll tell you right now. All the, they were all the secret teachings of Chumashat Yaakov Frank. The command went forth to enter Edom. The reason the reason why Rachnachman's lineage is preserved to this day, the reason his lineage was saved and preserved when many of his brethren, many of the Jews around him were dying and being massacred, was because they entered Edom. They knew the great secret. They followed the command of the great prophet and Hamashiach Yaakov Frank. They weren't stupid. They weren't uninitiated. Very interesting, and this and this is lost on all of these, all of these, all of these Jewish followers of Rab Nachman, all these people in the Hasidic movements and the Breslov movement. They're so clueless. They're so stupid. They're so ignorant. They're so spiritually blind. They don't even understand these holy divine texts. Rab Nachman is speaking about Chumashat Yaakov Frank. He's speaking about Yeshua. Do you know how many sections in Nukutim Moharan are indirectly referring to and speaking about Yeshua Chumashiach? And practically no Jew reading the text has even a damn clue. I'm telling you, fellow listeners, the stupidity, the retardation, the ignorance. I feel like Lucifer has won. Lucifer, to a large extent, has succeeded in his campaign against the world. Having all of this powerful divine knowledge and wisdom that I possess makes me feel like a man who is trapped in 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 insane asylum like the world is like an insane asylum to me i have a million splinters piercing my mind because of all the stupidity and retardation and ignorance and deception that i have to deal with on a daily basis And so those are just some of the seals, some of the proofs that Rab Nachman was a grand master. He was the chief grand master of the Holy Illuminati in Eastern Europe in his generation. And we should also understand that there are hidden grand masters that are pulling the strings um, in many religious movements, even in this last generation. The method of operation hasn't changed at all. And we still have, we have even in this last generation, we have Rabbanan who, who sit in very high places. One, one perfect example is Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, he's a grandmaster. And there's many others like him that conceal their grandmaster status from everyone. So the method of operation hasn't changed. There's many scholars, they wonder, after Shabbat Tzvi, they said that there was 600,000 Jews. Shabbat Tzvi had an army of 6,000 Jews, Zadikim, 600,000 Zadikim under him. You think they all just went away? It's like they all went away and disappeared. Where did they go? They really didn't go anywhere. 
even in the slash generation, we have holy ID key that are hidden and concealed, that conceal themselves, conceal themselves in the garments of Edom and other Luciferian garments for that matter. The order of the Zohar, the order of the Zoharim, is very strong and alive, even in this last generation. You just don't see it. You just don't know it. So, with that established, Shalom. Salah.